Hey everybody, welcome back to Faraday Research. It is uh, Wednesday morning and today I decided to do a video uh, because I've been planning to do my uh, um, Robert Adams motor build. And uh, in the last week, I've been kind of looking at this motor that John Bendini uh, developed uh, before he died. Well, actually he developed it quite a few years ago. I believe it was in the 80s and he didn't release uh, the idea to everybody about this motor until about a year or two before he passed away. Now him and his brother as you know both died on the same day. Hmm interesting but what is really good is the fact that he was able to release this motor to the world before he died as well as the other one called the window motor. Today we're going to be focusing on the zero force motor. And I want to talk about the science of this. It's very important that we understand how this motor works because it would definitely help you guys develop your motors uh, to do basically get the same effects what he was getting. Now, what does it mean by zero force motor? Well, basically, First of all, before we get into that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, um, uh, bottom right hand corner, and also I got my links in the uh, uh, description there for the Patreon, uh, PayPal, all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, uh, I wanna let you guys know, I'm heading to my most favorite uh, electronic surplus store this weekend with a good friend of mine that I'm actually building the uh, water machine for. He's going to come down and help me out uh, get the parts that I need for the build. Um, if anybody has any extra cash that they want to donate, I will need it for this weekend because I'm going to be getting the parts I need for this build. So, um, yeah, uh, let's get right into it. So, the Zero Force motor. The Zero Force motor works in a very different way than your conventional motor or your pulse motors. Now, the conventional pulse motors... Their coil will be here, like mine. And then you also have the steel core here. So the problem with all motors and even generators, because of the placement of where the coil is, will determine how bad the lens effect is going to uh, uh, be a factor in this motor. Now, because the core, you have your north pole here, and you have your south pole here, okay? So now when you cut the power off, you're gonna now experience the lens effect. Now, John Bandini years ago was developing this motor and said, well, how about if we put the coils this way relative to the wheel? Now, we know we create an electromagnetic flux field that goes from the north and then when it collapses, okay, you also got the other force coming off this way. And when the, when the power gets cut off, the flux will collapse to the middle of your coil, right here in the middle, right across both sides, like this. Okay, if, if, you create the magnetic field and you don't release it, the north pole flux line will go right from north, right to south. But in this motor, the flux lines, as soon as you cut the power off, like with the relay switch or your MOSFET or whatever you're using, when it collapses, that field will now collapse to the center point of your coil right here. And this is where the back EMF gets generated. This is where the negative energy gets generated. This center point of your coil is called a blotch wall. You can look it up on do a Google or Wikipedia. It's called a blotch wall. And you can read up on what that means. So it's the collapsing of the magnetic field. When it collapses, it collapses to the zero point. This is where the when you got a sine wave okay a regular sine waves like this okay and then you have your center point um hold on 
Let me just draw this a little better. All right. And then your center point or your zero is right here. Okay. This is positive up here of your of your uh, sine wave. Sorry, I'm trying to draw this upside down so it makes it a little harder. And your negative is down here. So what happens is when that coil collapses, it goes below zero point and goes here. This is negative. This is where your negative energy is on your sine wave. The recovery, the back EMF, is the travel point from point zero. We'll call this point zero at the bottom of the sine wave to here, to zero. This is where you get your back EMF, okay? And then it will rise again. Now, because it's going below the zero point or zero point of the plane, that's why you don't get any heating. There's no heating there. Now, if you're running a sine wave and it's always running on positive and you, uh, what they do in motors, what they'll do is they'll short it out, the back EMF. So what happens is it prevents it from going down that low. And because of that, that's why you get hysteresis, you get heating of the wire, you get heating of the coils. So if you're unable to extract this back EMF on the, on the negative, okay, you're going to have energy loss. You have to capture this bottom wave, that bottom of the sine wave. You have to capture that. Now, we're not using a sine wave in our pulse motors. We're using a pulse. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to go up and then dive below the zero point and then come back up again like this. It's a pulse wave. So that's more or less what we're using with the pulse motor and the Adams motor. This is would be on your regular uh, AC or DC motors. That's how your sine wave would work. No different from this and this. This is where your negative energy is here. This is your positive energy here. Okay. So keeping that in mind. So how does this zero force motor work? How does it spin? So, <coughs> excuse me. Let's look at, so we got north-south and then north-south. They're flipped, so one side's flipped. So now, when you start pulsing it, now you have created the circular motion of flux. It's now spinning. This one's now spinning opposite. While this one's pushing up, this one's pushing down. And that's how you get the wheel to spin with the magnet. So. Uh, John Bedini, his first model he did was six magnets. He had six magnets going around. Uh, he was using a bipolar switching device. I'm going to be doing experiments where I'm going to use the mechanical switch. Okay. The mechanical switch is also going to allow me to capture that back EMF when, when it hits the blotch wall. That power comes flying back out. I'm going to capture that power and throw it into the motor. Now, the other great thing with the zero force motor, there's no lens law because the coils are now sideways. They're not facing directly towards here. So if you've got a metal core here, when the magnet comes around and it, that flux, now the back EMF happens, that's where you get the braking effect right in this area here. That's where the braking effect happens. And that's where you get your losses. Within this scenario, having the coils on either side, laterally, not directly directed into the, the, the actual uh, motor wheel hitting the magnet, the wheel is riding the wave. How about that? It's riding the flux wave. So there is no lens effect in this. And this is the selling point of this motor. So I'm going to try to incorporate this idea with the Adams motor switching type device. Now, when John did his, he put a metal core in it and he was drawing about, uh, he was putting it at about, I think he was only putting about six or eight volts in. He wasn't putting much voltage. Now he was drawing about uh, 40 or 50 mil, no, about 20 milliamps, very, very little. But the second he introduced the metal core into it, guess what happened? 
the amperage went to zero. It went into the micro, uh, microwatts of power. So basically, he was running that motor for free because there was no resistance of the motor because there's no lens effect. And since he had that metal core to it, right away that amp meter went right to zero. He couldn't register it anymore. That's how low it was. So now you got a wheel here with mechanical power. It's spinning. You got power. You got physical, mechanical motion. So now what you want to do with it, you would put another wheel on an axle attached to this one, and you would put magnets all the way around, and I'm going to use my zero lens law coils and pick up that power off the second wheel so that this will actually have a two wheel design so it's going to be two wheels attached to one shaft uh, spinning the coils will be running the one wheel and the second wheel i'm going to build the uh, zero lens effect coils and i'm going to show you guys how to build that later actually the plans for that zero lens coil is in my Patreon right now. So you might want to check that out. Become a member, you'll get all that stuff there. All that info is in my Patreon. So yeah, um, this is where I'm going. Um, I'm going to the Electronics Depot this weekend with my good buddy uh, that lives nearby me. And I'm actually building his water machine right now. Um, that's in the works. So I'll be doing videos on the water machine build and uh yeah so if you guys could ship me a couple bucks on paypal that'd be awesome then i'll be able to get the parts i need uh for this weekend and i can get uh get the show on the road so this one i'm going to be working on the zero force motor implementing the switching system of the adams motor design and also incorporating another uh, the uh, zero lens coil system and this is going to be an amazing build totally amazing this is going to blow away pretty much anything that's out there if i could run this thing for like in the micro uh micro amps of power if you put a car battery to this thing this thing would probably run for six months but maybe longer because if you're not drawing any current off it the battery stays the same it because of the chemical um uh compound of the lead acid battery it, 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 it sustains itself, it recharges itself because there's no amperage being drawn off that battery. So this could be like the over unity zero force motor that everybody has been looking for. And it's out there now, guys are building it, but they're making a few mistakes. I've watched quite a few videos and I'm watching what these guys are doing. And you gotta follow what John Bandini uh, implemented in this motor. You have to follow what he's done because this motor should be running on microamps. Like you would have to get a meter uh, so small that it can read micro uh, microamps. So yeah, this motor is the real deal. I've seen it run. I've seen the ones that John Bandini built. They're, on, they're online on YouTube right now. Just type in zero force motor John Bandini and check out what he was doing. So I want to scale up what he's done. He made smaller models. He made one model that was actually quite powerful. Uh, the thing was just screaming away. So if I can get a second wheel off this one and spin it at a high RPM and then get those zero lens effect coils and attach them, I'm going to get pure power out of this thing with no tax whatsoever on it. It's going to run freely with no amp draw whatsoever off the system. So... The next video I want to do is about over unity and what is possible and what is not possible. And I've talked to some of the best guys in the business on this. And um, apparently this conversation came up about 20 years ago. What is actually possible on a, on a theoretical standpoint? So, yeah, uh, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget, subscribe, bottom right-hand corner, and all my uh, donate stuff's in my Patreon, PayPal, Bitcoin, all that stuff's there. If you can donate a couple bucks for me this weekend so I can get the parts I need, I'm going with my buddy there, and we're going to pick up the stuff in uh, Toronto uh, this weekend. So, yeah, uh, we'll see everybody soon, and uh, yeah, take care for now.